Hi, these comments are for GE and I am Michael from OTC, OnlineTofelCourse.com. Buddy, how are you doing today? And uh, I think you're doing some maybe independent speaking practice, so I'm getting the rubric set up. Let me take a look at the message you sent me. You say, Dear Michael, I want to thank you for your great effort in grading my previous practices. Also, I have a question. You said in the previous speaking that I had some problems in speaking. Can you please elaborate them further so I can enhance? Thank you very much. Please listen to evaluate my independent speaking practice number 202. And the topic is, would you buy an expensive item at discount or pay the full price? All right, that's what I would do. Usually, when I give you the feedback, I will tell you specifically what lessons you need to focus on to get better. Am I right? All right, so take notes. You got some paper and some notes? All right, showtime, buddy. Let's see how you did on this one. So I'm going to listen to the whole thing once without making any comments, and then I'll listen to it again and give you comments. I think it would be a good choice for me to get a discount to buy an expensive item for me because it is much cheaper if I have a discount. That means not only I will save uh, money, but also I can afford to buy the item. For instance, if I want to buy an iPhone, uh, especially those new premiere one, then uh, I do, don't have a lot of money to afford it. However, if the iPhone stores uh, have the discount, and then I will consider to buy a set of iPhone because one is uh, that I can afford it. Another thing is that this saves me a lot of money. I think it would be a good choice for me to. Okay, so. It was a little repetitive, a little bit, right? So that's maybe if there's a speaking problem, maybe you're a little repetitive. Okay, let me listen. Uh, I, I think you're, it's a strong response. I'm going to put you at at least 24 to 26 points on this practice test. Let's listen to it in a Got little a bit more detail. To buy and I think it, it would be a good choice for me. Instead of saying I think, just say to get a discount to buy an expensive item for me. I would just say it's a good choice to get a discount uh, when buying an expensive item. Because it is much cheaper if I have a discount. That means not only I will... It's much cheaper... <sighs> Excuse me. I need to take a nap. Um, okay, let's listen to that. I want to check your parallelism here. Hold on a minute. Give me a second. Because it is much cheaper if I have a discount. That it's much cheaper if I have a discount. It's pretty obvious. I mean, means that. not only I will save uh, money. Now wait a minute. Not only. Per if I have a discount. I need to check to see with not only. It's one of those negative words that create a subject, verb, and version word order. Not only will I save money by buying the iPhone, but I will also um, get a much better product or something. So that that's how you use not only but also. That means not only I will save. There's a problem, not only I will save. It's not only will I save. Go to Google and type in the keywords subject, verb, and versions with negative words. Or how about this, subject verb inversions with uh, not only. Now, I also have a good lesson on this. If you want to get a good TOEFL lesson, go to TOEFL subject verb inversions. And then you'll find my, my webpage over at Better TOEFL Scores. You can learn more about that grammar. So your speaking problem here is a word order problem. That's the problem. If, uh, money, but also... I can afford to buy the item. For instance, if I want to buy an iPhone, uh, especially those new premiere one, then uh, I do, don't have a lot of money to afford it. However, if the iPhone stores uh, have the discount, and then I will consider to buy a set of iPhone because one is uh, that I can afford it. I would probably in that case use a gerund instead of an infinitive. I will consider buying an iPhone, right? 
But, I mean, you have a good argument I would consider to buy because you're talking about a potential, not a completed action. But I think we consider the Jaren works better than the Infinitive. So I think your your knowledge of Infinitives and Jaren, you're, you're probably 80% proficient in that area. So if you want to learn more about that grammar, go to the grammar part of my course. And I have a lesson. It's called Jaren's and Infinitives. Another thing is that this saves me a lot of money. I think it would... See, it, it's, it's a little repetitive. That's the other speaking issue. But I'm going to put you at 24 to 26 points on it. You had a minor problem with, with word order, with uh, not only a subverb inversion thing that you didn't do. Uh, so that's why I'm giving you the score that I, I did. You had some problems with pacing, minor problems with pacing. You can uh, learn more about that by going to Pronunciation Lessons 41 through 44, buddy. All right. So thank you for doing the practice test. I think it's it's possible you could get 26, but maybe not likely. You're probably more likely to get around 24 to 25 on this.